it's Tuesday, September 14th, and um, it should be a fairly short video because a lot of this is we're going to be doing things that aren't going to be record worthy, but we'll record for a little bit to see what we have going from there. Uh, home children, you're going to need access to the green sheet and the white, the story from the lady and the tiger, although we're going to be looking at the back side, which has the fisherman on it. And then the green sheet, you're going to be wanting that one because we're going to be doing a lot of work with that here, here in just a moment. Uh, home children, you don't need to know your B points because it's not going to affect you. It's just the living children that that impacts. And then again, still no more plastic bottle donations. The rest of the stuff is good to go there. Did I have anyone else who has the uh, order form for the shirt? I know I just got one a second ago. Tomorrow is your last day to turn in order for me things. Do you have a form on paper? So, Bowman? Uh, I didn't know I was supposed to take it, so I took it to the office this morning, and they said they put it in the mailbox. I like that. We'll, we'll hope that it's in my mailbox then. So, fingers crossed on that one, yeah. They, if only you had a teacher who was asking for it every single day with people bringing him up little forms whenever he would ask. But I can understand your... Confusion. Carter! What type of fish did you think it was? The one I'm wearing right now is a salmon. What was the one yesterday? A bass. The bass was kind of eh. Right. Well, I, I didn't catch it or make it. I just wore it, so I appreciate it. Hi, Dylan! Is the color of like the shirts and the sweatshirt going to be like the color of the shirt you're wearing today? No, I'd still like it to be darker than this one, too. This is way more lilac than what I'm going for. I was looking if anyone here has the purple I'm going for, but not really. I don't even really see the purpley bits. Maybe closer to the purple that's over here on this area. It's probably closer to the purpley that I'd like to go for, but it's just the closest to what I can see. Uh, home children, this would apply to you, and then also living children again. If you need access to the information from yesterday, the stuff that goes into notebook, again, go clicky-clicky. It's all up on there, so if you're not sure and you fall behind, clicky-clicky and you're good. Just to review, to make sure information is in your noggins for the stuff we get to today going through Friday, the shorter version of each one of these is more of the one I want. The longer version you have to have just to make sure the knowledge is there, but it's not the most entertaining. For exposition, there's this dialogue and narration that sets up the story by introducing the characters and their situations. The shorter version is? Morning, morning, starting there start. you go. For rising action, the good their definition is? Exciting stuff. Exciting stuff. Way to put no emotion into saying the words exciting stuff. Eventually, we're going to teach you irony, and then I'm going to beat you with irony all the time in this class. Climax, the moment of greatest intensity in the story? Major OMG. Did you say bigger Yes. I mean, you're correct. It was just the fact that a climax is supposed to be a moment of intense excitement, and you guys could not have sounded less excited to say the thing, so I just get to continue mocking you as far as irony goes. Falling action, the part of the plot where the story begins to draw to a close is? Oh, ma'am, do explain? Mr. Grumpy, why don't you record this class more often? I don't know. I'm also shocked by such things. And resolution? Boring ending stuff. No, no. You don't get to start showing excitement when we get to the part that says boring ending stuff, and then that's the part where you guys all of a sudden start using voice inflection. It's like you're doubling down on irony. <sighs> anyway, I would like to use the words well done, but that'd be lying to you. <laughs> so, <laughs> to here with our little story pyramid, what part comes at the very beginning where it's flat and boring? Exposition. Good job. And then we get to the rising, exciting bits. Rising, rising action. action. Just seeing if you guys would actually show emotion yet. And then we get to the climbing to the max part, which is? Climax. Oh, <laughs> oh, just a little bit. And then, then we get to come down the mountain, which is the? Falling oh, action. No, no, okay. This is the part where now you get to sound more like zombies, where you're losing enthusiasm and it goes down. This is not an up inflection thing. This is a down inflection thing. This is? Falling action. Not falling action! It's like, <laughs> we'll try one. And then the very end of it, which is going to be the? Resolution. Better! I mean, that was like, that actually went to your guys' strength on that one. I'm like, this class is all exposition and resolution. Or as opposed to my other classes are all rising action and climax. But, you know, each their own. Alright. Then for here, not looking in notebook, because we're going to see what parts are in your brain again. So we have characters, what do you say? What clues in the story? There you go. And then what dance move do we do? All right. Uh, they're all dancing right now. This is great stuff. And then for our setting, you say? Where and when. The dance move for this one is? 
Bouncing is optional. This brings joy when you go through and do it. You're not spanking your wrist. Plot definition is what <laughs> zombies. And then our action for that one. <laughs> A point of view. How the story is told. See the story. Is told. See the story. <sighs> and our hand sign dancey thing with this is. Oh, I don't know what some of you are doing, but yes, that's ish. Theme. What we learn. Learn. And then our dance. <laughs> and internal conflict. A decision, a decision in the story. <laughs> and our dance move for this one. And then the ex external. Bagel Smith is back. Oh, he has yeah. realized Mr. Bagel Smith has left his back. 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 Woo! Woo! literally just made it up on the spot and told it to you. That was not his name. No, yes, that is his name. Who's I have never heard the, the term. Who's the bagel on the board for that? That would be Bagel, who's a whole different kid. Oh. That no, was Jermaine, who just bagel apparently Smith. just walked in and you guys went, Bagel Smith, and he went, okay. The and then apparently that was just a thing that happened. So I was real confused on what was happening, but apparently not as confused as all of you guys, because that was something. Hi, right, Bowen. Bagel Smith. Bagel. That's why he's a bagel smith. So external conflict. What's our definition for external conflict? Same person, same. And then our hand sign for the... Alright. Alright. Home children. I'm going to pause for a moment because we're going to be having kids standing up and crying here in just a second. And there's no point putting that on video. But then we're going to come back to you in just a second. I mean, you're not going to notice, but the living humans will notice. Alright, so you just sit there for a moment. Hey, and we're back, home children. Uh, and that was wonderful. We went for our volunteer people. All right, and then to here. Now, take white paper that had the lady and the tiger and turn that over to the other side. You're going to see the story of the fisherman. Home children, it's on the paper that you should have that has the lady, the lady and the tiger on one side, and then on the other side is the story of the fisherman. That's what we're going to get to today. So we're going to try a slightly different way of doing this where it's not me going through and walking you through the story. Here is how it's going to work today. I am going to let you get a chance to go through story on your own to get ready for Friday. But because I understand that might scare you, you do have the option to work with other people in the classroom if you have enough points for it. If you are in single digit points, you don't get to work with anyone. You are stuck working by yourself. If you have between 11 and 24 points, you can work with one other person. If you have 25 points or more, you're welcome to work with up to three people into your group, and that is fine with me. If you have like 11 to 24 or 25 or more, and you still want to work by yourself, you can work by yourself. If you're scared of other humans, I respect that also, mm -hmm. and you are fine working by yourself if you would prefer. You just don't get the option to work with other people unless you have more points going through. On green sheet, flippy doodle green sheet over. Mm -hmm. Ready for the home children. Here's your flippy doodle green sheet. You're going to go to the back side. And we already did the side that says Lady and the Tiger. Now we're going to do the side that says the Fishery Man. And so it is Fishery Man time. Our goal is hopefully be able to finish this by the end of class, depending on how well you go. First period, I had kids finish it. So and there's a chance you guys should be able to do it from there, too, um, as you guys go through and do the right-hand side from that one. Whatever isn't done becomes homeworky bits. If you want me to read it to you, I can. I have recorded myself reading it to you. And you are welcome to listen to the dulcet tones of my voice as long as you have broad headphones and you can listen to them. I actually have two versions of me reading it to you. And they're on the little pagey thing there where it says Mr. B version, and you can just do that and click it up. Um, it's going to have a version where it, I think number two is me teaching it to a classroom of kids a couple years ago. But the drawback to that one is, uh, you're going to have hooligan kids who are in the classroom and you can hear them. The good part is I act it out and perform it as the story goes along. If you want more just a straightforward version of me reading it, that would be number one. If you don't want me to read it and you want to read it yourself, that would be number zero and you just use your own brain. I'm happy either way. I'm just giving you options for those who'd rather have me read it to you. On the section over here, that's what you're going to be going through and doing. On the plot, if you get number one and number five... five one and five, I can give you number three. So when you get to the plot, 
on that one. If you do number one and number five, I will give you number three. I can't give it to you now because it spoils the story. I can't be like, number three is when the shark eats the boy's leg and he has to figure out how to survive. And you're like, what? Spoiler! So I can't tell you. So just when you get one and five, I can tell you three. Beyond that one, the characters, you have little descriptions for the setting. Make sure you can figure out. I have faith in you guys going over there. For the conflicts, make sure you write them correctly the way you're supposed to do them from the noty bits. I think. Home children, um, you're not working with someone unless you have another sick kid in your house, and that's kind of weird and creepy. Um, you're just going to be working all on your own on that one, so I wish you the best of luck. All right. Home children, here is where we stop because we are good to go. Uh, good luck. Get it done. Um, send me messages if you have questions.